Boardroom International Surfboard Expo here in Del Mar, California. If you've just joined us, my name is Todd Klein. Alongside me, Dave Stanfield. And it looks like we have another shaper in the shaping bay, or is that someone we saw earlier? I'm not sure, but we've got to thank some great folks that have helped us out. Uh, Soulspot.com, SurferMag.com, and SurfersVillage.com. Hopefully Bruce is still watching late at night over there in Europe. But uh, you want to stick around. Our next guest is the... Uh, the modern godfather of skateboarding, possibly. Well, yesterday, you know, this, but is he's my a surfer. this is my take so far, Dave. Yesterday, we had a lot of vendors, some great insight on some of their products, sprinkled in with a few legends. So far today, it's all legends. We've got another one, Tony Alva. Welcome to the set. Thank you very much. Great to have you here today. And I want to just jump right into it. You know, I, you're obviously a legend in the world of skateboarding, but it all started surfing. Yep. I was a surfer first and foremost. I've always been a surfer, and um, I cross-trained by being a skateboarder, but it, it kind of flipped halfway through my life. I became a professional skateboarder instead of my, I was aspiring to be a pro surfer, and I wasn't good enough at a young age. I didn't really have the, uh, the technique and the courage or the ability to be at that level yet, but I've, I've surfed since I was 10 years old. And, you know, obviously we've seen, you know, a lot of your era uh, you know, the, the Dogtown and the Z-Boys showcased in the movie that came out in 2005, the Lords of Dogtown. So we know a lot about you as well as everybody out there. Mm. Unbelievable. And tell us, you know, just a little bit, you know, obviously we saw what the film told us, but tell us, you know, that day when you decided, hey, there's no waves, I got to do something, and I got to get that feeling that I get when I surf. Well, it was a little bit of that, but it was also the fact that um, I really wanted to be on the team from the other side of the tracks. Okay. I wanted to be on the surf team, and I ended up kind of going through the side door by joining the skateboarding team that was a junior division, and it was Jeff Ho, Zephyr team that was from uh, Bay Street, right, in the area where uh, I learned how to surf. And what happened was, you know, um, we started entering competitions at a very young age, and Jay Adams was another kid that was on a team that had the natural ability to be a pro surfer, but it ended up that he put a lot more energy into skateboarding as well, and he and I um, grew up together just pushing the limits. And um, whether the waves were good or not, we were always skating. But there were there was certain days where it was just a magical day, and I think one of those days was when the waves were good in the morning and in the afternoon. We had an empty swimming pool, which at the time was unheard of, that was legal to skate. And Jay was trying to do these hand plants, backside airs, you know, in the, the hip, into the shallow end of the pool. And I kept trying to go front side in the deep end of the pool and I actually completed like one of the first um, like fully made and right away aerial maneuvers which was a front side tuck in the air and this was uh, in like the mid 70s. Yeah I was actually looking online and you are one of if not the innovator of the aerial one of and Dave I'm sure you got plenty of questions. Well uh, obviously he went out surfing this morning he's got a couple of boards I want to talk about but when uh, do you ever watch any of the competitions or the webcasts or on site and are you seeing Finally, a lot of young, youthful surfers uh, that are skaters, the John Johns of the world and the uh, Kalani Davids of the world. Dane Reynolds that are skates? Well, yeah, but Kalani David obviously being very competitive mm -hmm. in the ranks, now taking it to the water. Are you, are you impressed with a lot of these young skaters, surfers? Um, I'm impressed with just anybody that has the ability to even paddle nowadays because I mean, I see a lot of people in the water that, you know, surfing is very popular right now. And there's a lot of congestion, but when I see these young guys that are out there, regardless of how crowded it is, picking off the best waves and doing the maneuvers that they do. I mean, you guys mentioned Dane Reynolds already. The guy's an extraordinary, you know, talent. Um, Kaloe Andino, who is the spawn of a very good friend of mine, Dino Andino. Um, I lived in San Clemente for quite a while. And like I said, you know, I've never quit surfing and I've started surfing more and more and more. And nowadays I surf like five days a week and my surfing is the best it's ever been right now. And I'm 55 years old. I mean, and the cross training with skateboarding has given me longevity as a professional skateboarder. So I've been there and done that. And I know what can be done as far as surfing and skateboarding and correlating the two as far as technique goes. But nowadays I think skateboarding is giving back to surfing more than ever because you're seeing guys doing stuff on waves that we never imagined could ever be done, not only surfing, but also on skateboards. And skateboards has gone beyond the limit, but surfing is catching up because of the cycle. And the cycle that comes from the advancement of the technology involved in the aspects of surfing and skateboarding, they're just hand in hand and they're giving back to each other on a daily basis. On a daily basis, you're seeing things pushed 
and limits broken, and not just on the big wave you know, level. We're talking like on high performance, like what we call hot dog surfing back in the day too. It's very progressive. When we see these boards, are you a designer and shaper? I wish I was a shaper. I don't okay, have, there you go. I don't have the patience for it. I'm just very like always moving forward at a very fast speed. And my goal lately, especially having a spiritual path in life, is to kind of slow down and be able to have some equanimity in life and you know, not get too excited, but then again, not to get too negative either. And what I do is I contribute my design, um, a lot of my ideas and concepts I contribute to two shapers that I love working with. One of them being Bill Menard and Bob Mitzvin is a guy that I do a lot of prototype stuff with. And um, we just come up with boards that work for us, boards that really work in the conditions that we surf. And if it ever gets to a, a more serious and more extreme level where we need to do boards that are uh, geared towards bigger waves and more speed and stability, I would like to do that too. But right now what I make is I make boards that are very surfable, very fun. I love skateboards that surf and surfboards that skate. And that's my concept. That's what I love doing. And uh, on a daily basis, I'm in the water. I was out this morning, the little purple board that you see with the three fins. I was out surfing uh, Del Mar first thing this morning when the sun came up. Wow, and that's got a serious, uh, what do you call the fin set up there? Maybe uh, you could. They're two stabilizer D fins that were handmade prototype uh, fins. It's got a green O nine inch flex in the middle. It's a five fin setup. I can use five fins on it if I want to. Right now I'm using three. There's a slight V in the tail, similar to what Bob McTavish came up with in the shortboard revolution. And a lot of the hulls, the nose, the template, and the outline is based on what Bob Simmons did back in the day. I ride a lot of boards that are based on the, the hull, the Simmons hull, and any aspects from hydrodynamic uh, design, surfboard design, I like to incorporate those as well. We're looking at that right now, or any second. So uh, the depth, I mean, the, that center fin is what? 12? Nine inches. inches. Nine inches. Nine inches. It looks now, a little longer, but it's it's nine inches. Okay, and the tail is called a... It's a slight V, similar to what Bob McTavish came up with back in the day. Total chop tail. Yeah, we just, you know, when, when the guys took their longboards and chopped the tails off, that was the concept. But what we do is we pull it in a little, like a very, very subtle swallow almost. And it's got that airplane wing effect, you know, the way that it's kind of rockered. I like to keep a little bit of thickness in the chest for paddling. And usually my boards that I ride, I won't even put a gloss on them. I just use sanded bottoms. Is there a particular name for that model? The Liquid Zen, but that's the five fin version of the Liquid, Liquid Zen. Liquid Zen, five fin model. Yeah. What's the ideal condi conditions for that board? About like it was this morning for you? Down the line is really good too though. Like a wave like Malibu or Trestles, yeah. or you know, if you get lucky enough to go up into Central California, where there's some really like down the line, nice, you know. Some nice face, not real crunchy beach break, but a nice line. You could ride it on crunchy beach break, but I, in beach break, I like to ride even smaller, a um, little shorter, Fits and a little thicker boards. In the I even go smaller and shorter on those boards. Yeah, no, that thing looks really fun. What drove you to get involved with the surfboards? Um, like, I just, what are you hoping to achieve with it? Having fun and having boards to ride all the time, because I'm constantly going to the next thing, and I'm always like, turning my boards into demos and then designing something that's a step child of the bottom one. Like, like this one's called the Love Machine. Well, I got an, a board that's called the Love Child and it's a product of all of the things that worked on the Love Machine and a couple other boards that I like into another new board. So I like the, just like with skateboarding, I like the samples, the prototypes, the boards that nobody else is riding. I want to ride whatever nobody else has got before they get it and then when it really works, that's when I go into production and I start making hundreds of them and, and get them out to the public. Awesome. Well, I'm being told to wrap it up, but I got to ask you one more question. Outside of surfing and, and giving back to the sport with your, you know, your input on these boards, what else is Tony Alva up to? I, I read you started, you started a band this year. Yeah, I'm an avid musician. I'm a DJ. Um, on an international level, I DJ all over the world, especially doing stuff for Vans, my shoe sponsor. And I have a signature shoe that I design. I design shoes with Vans. I play bass in a couple different bands, but the one main band that I play in is called GFP. The mild version is Generation for Power or Generation for Peace, whichever one you like. And uh, being a bass guitarist is, uh, I like being close to the rhythm, that kind of like just, as they say, not a Brahma, which is, you know, sound is God. And I really feel that there's a spiritual energy that comes from being a musician that is correlates with my surfing. And it gives back to my skateboarding and just kind of calms me down. It gives me something I can connect with on a daily basis and stay close to, uh, what I would call God and just have like a path in life that gives me serenity and uh, use the wisdom and experience that I've gotten from, I've been a professional skateboarder since 16 and I just turned 55 a couple weeks ago. 
So I've got a little bit of experience that I can use and my technique's just getting better, especially because I'm a surfer. Tony, and an uh, honor to interview you. I'm being told to wrap it up. Let's send some, you know, I know there's a lot of people, just like Dave and myself, we want to know more about Tony Alba. What's your website? Um, right now, the, probably the best one to go to for, um, for the surfing stuff would just be alvasurfcraft.com. Alvasurfcraft and because everything's linked to one, if you get to one site, you end up in the whole cyber world, you get the whole cyber sandwich all in one. So Alva Surfcraft's a good one to go to if you want to check out the boards and stuff. Tony, thanks so much for spending time with Dave and myself, You're giving welcome. insight to our viewers out there. Best of luck to you. We'll be back with more action here in Del Mar at the boardroom.